Hi guys, if you're a filmmaker or if you just in general want to save up uh, some money, um, as filmmakers we like to save up money for the like camera kit, for example the body for this OMD N1 cost uh, about £800 when I got it and the lens was uh, 450 this 25mm uh, f1.4. The lens which I'm filming myself, uh, the Olympus wide angle 12mm um, Costs with f 2.0, sorry, uh, costs about £600, and the camera filming me is 3500 So, all of this is quite a lot of money which has built up over time. Now, uh, basically, if you want to save money, uh, think about how much you're earning. I mean, do you have any money left over at the end of each month? For example, I usually have about £200, £250 left over at the end of each month from my work. So, what I do is all the money which I get left over, I transfer it into an ISA so that I don't end up spending it on things like Coke, which is, uh, you know, the bane of my existence. I spend quite a lot of money on this and I'm trying to cut down. Uh, but the thing is, if you cut those sort of things out as well, that will help you save money. Now, um, when it comes to things like uh, pound coins, I put all of my pound, spare pound coins into an emergency funds uh, thing, which actually builds up quite well over time because uh, I pay bus drivers in £5 notes or I pay them in change like my 50p's, 20p's uh, but then again that's advantageous to them as well because they actually need the change so that's kind of cool but um, any £2 coins also I put into here I've got £46 in there um, just built up over time that was this is just one month's worth of two pound coins which is really really quite good as you can probably tell I spend money like water so what I need to do is I need to partition it off into what I can spend and what uh, what I can need to save up so around this month I've got about um, 320 pounds saved uh, so far which can go towards buying the next bit of equipment that I'm going to get uh, for example, when I got my drone, that was uh, I, I was getting about three hundred pound a month in from just partitioning off my cash. The thing is, the main problem with cash flow is that if you've got the money, you'll spend it, and I usually spend it on stuff like this, which is really really bad for me, um, and I need to cut down on that. So if you've got things in your life that are um, expensive, like cigarettes or um, you know, you can cut down slightly on those things. For example, I used to go through about, um, I used to go through eight litres of Coke a day. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I've got it down to about 500 millilitres now. So that's, uh, that's positive. And I'm spending a heck of a lot less money on it. And all of that money can go towards the projects which I'm, I'm working on. On top of that, um, one of my other problems is, is that I like to order dinners as well from just eat things like that um, which is atrocious and it's really really bad for you as well as uh, costing a lot of money so whenever I want to order something from Just Eat I go onto the site I look up exactly how much it costs and I add it all up at the end of the month this month I've saved 196 pounds from not going onto that site also in terms of games things like that things which I don't really need I will kind of sell those, uh, I won't, no, not sell them, I will not buy them and I'll add up the money and at the end of the month I'll transfer all of that into uh, my ISA, which is now growing beautifully. On top of that, you can also go when you've got enough money in your ISA, like for example, um, say I've got two grand in my ISA, I could transfer that over to an investment trust. Now, I would definitely recommend Foreign and Colonial because they've managed to make my money grow and swell amazingly. Um, I'd split it evenly, um, the amount of money you've got in, say, £1,000 goes to um, British um, assets and £1,000 goes towards um, European growth. So, um, the, you know, you've got nice money coming in, whether England's doing well or whether, you know, Europe's doing well. Or if you're anywhere in the world, I think Foreign and Colonial is absolutely badass as a company. Uh, the only problem with putting your money in an investment trust like this is that it takes about a week to get the money back if you, um, you know, do uh, like because you have to write letters and prove that you're you uh, when you want the money back into your account. But that's not really a problem because over time, it adds an extra bit of money that comes in every month, and you can transfer that bit of money into um, 
the special savings account or your ISA to regrow your ISA again, or you can just put it all back into Foreign and Colonial and just watch it grow in the background, which is absolutely fabulous. Uh, I absolutely love the company to bits. They turned my six grand into about nine grand very quickly within a couple of years. And um, not only do they, um, not only can you get it so that they, um, will just up your money but you can get it so that they pay you dividends at the end of each year or end of each quarter I believe um, which means that you'll get a nice little chunk of money coming in every now and then I've worked out that for um, about ooh, what is it it's about hundred and eighty thousand pounds you can live comfortably for the rest of your life without ever having to work again so that's really really positive and it's a very very good income uh, so it's a it's a good way to sort of you know, evolve and uh, make yourself more money. And the beautiful thing about having about 180,000 in is that the growth of that money is going to go up faster than uh, the cost of living, which is awesome. But anyway, I'm starting to ramble. I would recommend getting a little camera thing if you are a filmmaker so that you can, um, you know, store your two pound coins in it. And you'll be amazed at just how much, how quickly these sort of things add up. On top of that, look into uh, things like your uh, food bills can you get food which is cheaper um, or maybe eat less meat and uh, eat more vegetables which is highly hypocritical of me because I'm a carnivore which is really really bad for me uh, but I am trying I, I did have some vegetables about a couple of weeks back so, so that's that's positive but you know look around at your lifestyle choices do you buy different clothes a lot do you need the clothes get things which you need live a very spartan lifestyle and put all of your money away become a miser it's absolutely beautiful because it allows you to buy excessively extortionate things like this i got this for pho portrait photography i haven't done any portrait photography since i got it but i love it anyway because i can run and gun with this one because it's, it's got an inbuilt stabilizer and even though it's noisy and stuff it's beautiful to have that around anyway i'm rambling now rambling like a madman i mean look i can even afford extortionately expensive waistcoats from the cat, Re cat rescue shop ah yes good point charity shops are very useful you can find lots and lots of cool stuff in charity shops and you get it for a lot cheaper which means that all that extra money which you would have spent on something you can put aside and say yeah i'll put that in either my emergency funds or my little camera thing or even just transfer it across to your uh, ISA anyway I hope this one's helped uh, I'm not particularly brilliant with financial advice all I know is that foreign and colonial is the dog's bollocks and uh, that uh, yeah this works it's a very very good way of uh, making money I earn the minimum wage uh, I make a little bit of money from music composition because I am a composer for film uh, but they generally don't pay me very much, if at all. Um, and, uh, you know, I can afford stuff like this. I've managed to get about £11,000 worth of cameras in the past three years just by saving up. So, um, you know, that's good. And I could have spent that money on, say, a C500, you know, proper cinematic camera. But then again, there's a lot of you out there which have probably got much better jobs, much better filmmakers. You actually make money on YouTube or whatever. You know, well, yeah, also my YouTube money, which I earn pitifully little of. I think I get about £10 a month from all of my channels. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's gone as high as 20 but, you know, it's sometimes it's really, really low as well. But the thing is, all of this stuff adds up and it all helps things. You know, I mean, one of the reasons I do YouTube is, is it's a bit of a hobby and uh, it's nice to see how much each month is coming in. But, you know, what can I say? I, I am a whore for uh, entertainment purposes. <laughs> but anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Um, if you've got any questions or anything, uh, let me know. If you want to go to my website, the link is in the description bar, wherever it is in the future, where... Um, YouTube puts it and oh yeah if, if you do want to help me out financially um, all the music that's for sale on my site I've made it and it's all royalty free so if you buy that you know you get to keep it and use it in whatever you like whatever for whatever reason um, unless of course you're one of the people who has upset me in my life and so far there's only been one little company that's done that because they tried to sue me and I will get my revenge yes I will destroy them from the inside but anyway take care have a lovely day and it's uh, 
I'm sorry I haven't released a lot of videos recently. I've just become a dad, so... Oh, God, the expense. <laughs> anyway, take care. Bye.